I finally have beaten Star Wars Jedi Survivor and I do have a lot of things to say about it. I know this review is coming a little bit later, but I wanted to really take my time with this game and I did give it a considerable amount of time, but I didn't complete it. No, yes, I did complete the story and I did complete all of the missions. I just didn't 100% complete it. And after I did complete the story, I didn't really feel any need or sort of desire to 100% it. Look, there's a lot to say about this game, so let's just get right into it. First off, the story. I'm going to go through it real quick just so I can give you guys the main gist. And of course, this is a spoiler-filled review, so if you haven't played the game or watched the cutscenes, this will tell you everything that you need to know. So we start off with Cal Kestis. Everybody loves Cal Kestis. I love Cal Kestis in BD1. And this takes place, I think, five years or so after Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which amazing game. That game was like lightning in a bottle. And this game tries to recapture it and makes it bigger and better, or at least tries to. Here's the story. Cal is working odd jobs for the Empire in Saw Gerrera, and he stumbles upon this guy from the High Republic named Dagon Gera, who has basically been floating in a Bacta tank for ages. We learn about his history, and there was a planet called Tantalor, which the High Republic Jedi were trying to secure to make sort of a safe haven for the Jedi. And obviously, this is interesting to Cal and BD-1 and their whole crew because they're looking for somewhere to hide everyone, sort of a sanctuary from the Empire. So Cal rescues Dagon from the Bacta, and he turns evil. We see him actually bleed his kyber crystal, and I thought this scene was really, really cool. But, you know, just from seeing this guy immediately, you could tell the direction that it was going. Dagon is so hell-bent on getting to Tantalor and finding this secure place for the Jedi and for, you know, his order, that he's blinded by it and is sort of causing harm, more harm than good. So he's hell-bent on getting to Tantalor, and he thinks that this will be the future for his people, but his people are long gone. Because remember, he has been floating in Bacta for hundreds of years, since the High Republic. I thought the introduction to the High Republic stuff was cool, but it doesn't necessarily go any further beyond that. We get these cool devices and we see stuff from the High Republic, but beyond that, it's just serving sort of a waypoint to get through the story. We fight Dagon a couple times and we meet up with a guy named Bode who actually has been working with Cal since the beginning. He's sort of your side wingman and he fights along with you, along with the other characters that we well know from the previous game. We meet up again with Seer, Grease, Marin. Eno Cordova is actually alive from the first game. This was really nice. And we sort of get the whole band back together halfway through the game. So they're trying to find a way to Tantalor and all of a sudden Bode, the guy you've been working with the whole time, who's been super nice, he's got this daughter, you feel like you know the guy, whips out his blaster and kills Eno Cordova. Now this was a big twist and it wasn't really a twist that I was, you know, expecting, but at the same time I wasn't seriously shocked by it. It kind of felt like, oh, this is what we're doing? This guy's been fighting with a blaster the entire game and now not only did he kill Cordova, but he's also a Jedi that survived Order 66, the same as Cal. The same as many other Jedi that we've come to learn have turned from good to bad after surviving Order 66. So not necessarily an original concept, but it was cool. And I did like his character because he was really fleshed out before we found out his true intentions. And his intentions were true the whole time. We just didn't see him going about it in this way. He has a daughter he wants to save and he wants to secure Tantalor for himself to save her and he needs to sort of go against Cal to do so. Oh, I forgot to turn on the Infinity Gauntlet, so give me one second. Okay, now that that's on, we can continue. In the first game, we had plenty of different planets to go after. I think there were about five that you could explore, but it included Dathomir, Ilum, and a bunch of other super recognizable Star Wars planets. And in this game, they go the opposite route and only give us one or two planets that we may have heard before, which those two planets, Coruscant and Jedha, were awesome. They took the formula from the first game and really developed this to be more open world than the first one. And look, this is just me personally. I have some open world fatigue at the moment. I don't really like doing fetch quest stuff. Same thing that I've done in a million other games. I'm such a big fan of linear storytelling at the moment. So this was kind of, I don't want to say a chore to get through, but I felt myself not wanting to do any side missions. And the reason why is because the rewards were just aesthetic. And this is a good thing, don't get me wrong, I love that you can completely customize Cal, his hairstyle, his clothes, his poncho that returns, BD-1, all of these things you can completely customize along with the lightsaber which has so many different options here. That was probably my favorite thing you could customize because you could also change the material and there was just so many different combinations. And speaking of the lightsaber, the combat was completely changed here because there are now, I think, five different stances that you can use throughout the game. You've got single bladed, double bladed, twin blades, cross guard, and blaster. This was what I was most looking forward to in the game besides the story, and it was kind of a letdown. And I'm saying that because all of the stances are good. 
and all of the stances can be used against every single type of enemy. I remember back in Fallen Order when I had the single blade and the double blade, I would switch to the double blade when I had a bunch of enemies around me and then single blade when it was just one or two because the single blade did more damage but the double blade attacked more. It's the same here but when you get the twin blade which is what Ahsoka does and the cross guard that is super super heavy, the trade-off didn't really feel worth it. Yes, the cross guard did more damage, but it took so long to swing that thing that it was basically, you know, minimal differences between that and a normal lightsaber. And the blaster was cool, but I felt like it was just so weak that it didn't really matter because the whole other time you're you're pointing your lightsaber like Count Dooku stabbing the, the stormtroopers, but the blaster is only used. So the five lightsaber stances were fun, but I was expecting a little bit more than that, especially when you consider that there's about eight or so skill trees that go along with all of the combat, healing, force, and perks, etc. It was a lot to undertake, and by the end of the game, I had only maxed out a couple of those skill trees and barely did anything besides upgrade the lightsaber stances. But anyway, to continue with the story, Bode betrays you, and we do get some really awesome moments in this game. My favorite thing has to be the traversal and how fast Cal is able to move throughout the game, because we don't do a reset from Fallen Order. Cal starts here with all of the abilities that he had at the end of the last game, and I love that they did that. I hate when you do a sequel game and you have to relearn everything that you did last time. But now we get a grapple gun, we get a really cool Night Sister move where we can dash through things. Lots of really cool additions to traversal, and once again, that's probably my favorite part about this game. I do think the world design was a little bit empty because you do have these giant open planes and of course you're going to see, oh, here's a couple stormtroopers, oh, here's a couple droids, oh, here's some animals, but it's sort of scattered throughout and it really bothered me with the open worlds because there are major performance issues that I had on a PS5. Normally, I love playing my games on the performance mode at 60 frames per second. Super smooth experience, nothing to really worry about. But here, even at the 60 frames per second mode, I'm dropping down to like 25 frames at times in the open world sections, and it takes me out of the experience. I found myself actually switching to the fidelity mode because at least there, the graphics look a little bit better, and I'm still getting the same frame performance as I would if I was playing 60. And at least at the high fidelity mode, I can sort of lock in a tighter frame rate, even though it's lower. So that really did bother me a lot, and it happened throughout the entire game. It was normally just at the beginning in the open world stuff, and then it got better for a second, but as soon as I got to the the open worlds again, it just tanked. And it's just such a bummer because I was hoping for a solid 60 frames per second experience, especially something that's reminiscent of the Soul series when combat and timing has to be perfect. I'm getting so sidetracked. Let me let me finish the story first. So after Bode betrays Cal, you know, Cal gets hurt and then we actually get to play as Seer for a little bit. She was super powerful and I did love playing as her and then they did something that I think was just cheap. Look, I seriously don't think I'm being dramatic when I say, in Fallen Order, when Darth Vader appears, it is one of the most menacing villain entrances in video game history. We know who Darth Vader is. We know that Cal and Seer stand no chance against this guy. So when you try and fight him for like three seconds and get demolished, it made sense. It felt good. It felt in the Star Wars world. And not to mention, when Darth Vader arrives, the theme, the music, the feeling and emotion that we're feeling from our characters that we were with in that time was so powerful and so emotional. Go back and watch that scene. I'm telling you, it's just so intense. I've carried so much hate for you. So you're fighting a seer and all of a sudden, you know, you get rid of all the droids and all the stormtroopers and then Darth Vader just walks in and there's not really a buildup. There's not necessarily any hint towards that, which is fine, but he just sort of walks in and you're like supposed to be, oh, that's so crazy. I've never seen this before. I knew this was going to happen, which is the reaction I'm guessing they were going for, but it, it kind of felt weird. Of course, I was excited to see Darth Vader and I knew, okay, now I'm actually going to get to fight Darth Vader, but it definitely lost a little bit of that magic that was present in the first game's appearance. So you play as Seer and you start whipping Darth Vader's butt. 
It's a super long fight, and one of my least favorite things about this game is in the fights, they break each section up with a cutscene. And these cutscenes are long and really takes me out of the fight. You see this massive health bar, but every quarter way through, it stops and plays a cutscene. Oh, and if you die, you have to start it all over again and watch those cutscenes again. Yes, you can skip them, but it still takes time to load back into the game. So you fight Darth Vader and you start whipping his butt and then, of course, Darth Vader's gonna win, so Darth Vader wins. And he kills Seer in the process. Seer puts up a really good fight and I do feel like Seer was worthy of a at least a sort of challenging duel with Darth Vader. But Vader limps off like he just had the hardest battle of his life. And I don't think that's necessarily lore accurate, but I do enjoy how much we got to play as Seer and fight Darth Vader once and for all. But if you go back to Fallen Order, he destroyed Seer in a matter of seconds. Where here, it took me like 15 minutes to just fight this guy multiple times, waiting for the cutscenes, etc. So unfortunately, Seer passes away, as well as, you know, Cordova from Bode. And they manage to group back together and head to Tantalor because they have the compass that they needed to get there. And then after a stop at like an Imperial base, which probably was my favorite part of the game, it was actually three quarters, if not close to the end, where you are on this Imperial sort of lookout that i was like okay this is getting interesting i'm loving where this is going and that whole section is so short and is only 30 minutes max so then you go to tantalor which is cool to actually see it in person and you fight bode i do like the relationship cal tried to develop with bode's daughter because this sort of serves as his compass to try and keep bode on the light side and speaking of the light side cal really delves into sort of some dark side temptations here and I hope that they go into this deeper in the next game because I feel like that could really open up the funness and the adventure for the sequel to this one. Because there's moments where Cal sort of enrages himself and uses parts of the dark side to defeat Bode and do things earlier, and I really love that. I think that was one of my favorite combat elements. It reminded me a lot of Force Unleashed because it allows you to feel overpowered, and that's what's fun about video games. You want to feel overpowered, you want to do things that you can't do in real life, why not? And it was nice to see more dismemberment with the lightsaber in this game, more so than the last game, but I feel like it could be amped up just a little bit more. So anyway, you defeat Bode and you try one last time to turn him to the light side, but it doesn't work. But you defeat him and he ends up dying. And that's pretty much the end of the game. Look, overall, this was a fun game. I enjoyed my time with it. Did I enjoy it as much as Fallen Order? Absolutely not. In fact, once I finished the story, I took the disc out, put it back in the box, and put it back on the shelf. I had really no interest in going back and completing the extra bounty missions, completing any side missions, because I don't think I did any, and that's so unlike me. I love doing all of the side missions and games to get all of the gear, but all the stuff here was cosmetic and didn't really feel like it was worth it, and the performance issues just took me out of it. I wanted to get through the story. But once the game was over, I took the disc out, because I didn't see myself going back to this anytime soon. It's so weird. I don't, I don't know how to score this game because I guess it is still so fresh in my mind, but I don't even think it's close to being as good as Fallen Order was. I still love the characters. I love Cal Kestis, and I can't wait to see where he goes next, but this was not necessarily a huge win for me. Like I said, it was still fun. I enjoyed my time with it, but it's not something I'm gonna remember as much as Fallen Order. I did enjoy the parts on Coruscant at the beginning. I thought that was really cool, and I'm guessing you can go back there. And I saw a really cool video from Star Wars Theory where he posted him defeating all of the bounties and seeing Boba Fett. But look, man, that should have been in the normal game. It shouldn't have just been an extra thing if you defeat everything, because I feel like the main story needed that. We didn't even see Saul Guerrera in this game, which we saw him last game. We do get a tiny Darth Vader cameo, but that's pretty much it. I'm not saying everything needs massive cameos and huge appearances from well-known characters, but it does help, especially when you're having all of these issues with performance and other glitches and stuff. In fact, multiple times, and I hate to even admit this, but I had to turn the difficulty down to get through a boss because I didn't want to spend any more time on it, and then I cranked the difficulty back up after I beat it. Not the main bosses, but the side ones that give you a bunch of XP. And of course, I felt like garbage for doing that, but there was no consequence to that. You can switch your difficulty anytime in the game, and there's no trophies or achievements attached to difficulty, or XP gain or loss. It's definitely a weird game. I, I don't know really what to say other than that. I Again, I enjoyed my time, but I don't see myself going back to this anytime soon. And I don't think there's going to be DLC for it. It doesn't temper my expectations and my hopes for the next one because they did try a lot of cool things here with the animal mounts, the different lightsaber stances. I feel like it just needed a little bit more work to be perfect. If you love Star Wars, you're going to at least enjoy some elements of this game. And I did, 100%. But off of the back of Fallen Order, I mean, that game was just lightning in a bottle and it was going to be hard to top that. And I don't think taking the open world route necessarily helped it. I like that Dark Souls essence that Fallen Order had and I feel like this game sort of gets away from that. 
Guys, let me know what you thought down below about this game. If you've played it or your thoughts on the story, I'm really curious. I will read it if you comment. And lastly, we are so, so close to freaking 400 subscribers. I can't believe it. We haven't even been on YouTube for six months and I'm already almost at 400 subscribers and it's all thanks to you guys. That being said, I think 90 something percent of my viewers aren't subscribed. So if you could hit that button, it would mean so much to me. I love having you guys in this community and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.